Hi there, my name is Catherine, I hope you're doing well. Today I just thought I would sit down and have a wee chatty video with you, a bit of a book haul because as you can probably have guessed by the title of the video and by the little clips that introduced this part, I was in Scotland last month for a couple of weeks. I spent a week up in Skye with my side of the family and then I spent the rest of the time down in Edinburgh with Alex's side of the family and also seeing some friends I've not seen in a while. It was really really lovely. The clips that you saw from the beginning there were from a really really amazing day that I spent out with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. We went into Edinburgh for a little bookshop and coffee, tea, lunch day and the weather was so gorgeous that day couldn't have asked for a better day. We went to a bookshop that I'd never visited before called The Gently Mad, which is a bookshop and bookbinder. It's not quite in the centre, it's like a little bit of a walk out of the centre, not too far, but they kind of specialise in like vintage books, um, first editions. We didn't really stay in there for long because it's not really a bookshop that you can browse easily. It's very like aesthetically pleasing. And obviously it's got a lot of cool collections in there, but I think it's the sort of bookshop you would go in if you specifically know there's a book there that you're wanting to invest in or something like that. Then we went to lunch at the candy bar, which is in the centre, and that was really nice. And then we went down to Waterstones, and that is the only bookshop that I bought books from. So I bought a very exciting book. I bought The Secret History by Donna Tart, which you can see I'm currently reading. I'm nearly halfway through now. This has been on my TBR for for so long. This is like the book that defines the dark academia subgenre. I kind of started that whole subgenre and I really like dark academia so it was a bit ridiculous that I had never read it before. So I decided to pick this up. As soon as I had it in my possession I was like now's the time to read it. I decided before that I for my TBR for May I did want to read it but I, it was only when I had it in my hands that I was like no this is the right time which is quite funny because I would feel like dark academia is quite a autumnal genre like it evokes in me New England autumn very like Gilmore Girls feelings but with death and mystery but it's just really taking my fancy right now when the sun has literally just begun to shine and I am really really enjoying it <laughs> spoiler alert for my May wrap up I don't know yet if it's gonna be five stars I went into it expecting it to be an easy five stars I mean I'm this far through and right now I'm still kind of like where is this gonna go because there's quite a major thing that's happened already and we know a major thing is coming up it's the aftermath of that major thing where I am just a bit confused about what's gonna happen and anticipating it very much. The description for this book is truly deserving of the accolade modern classic. Donna Tartt's novel is a remarkable achievement, both compelling and elegant, dramatic and playful. Under the influence of their charismatic classics professor, a group of clever eccentric misfits at an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. But when they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality, their lives are changed profoundly and forever. So yeah, pick this one up from Waterstones. I also picked up another book that I am very excited for and has been on my TBR for such a long time. Shatterby by Tahira Mafi. This is, I don't know what this is actually. This was big when I watched booktube when I was a teenager and now it's become big again through TikTok and I never read it. I want to do a video 
where I read the series for the first time and like document my thoughts and feelings as they're happening. But the more I have looked into this book, and I've not looked into it very much, I know there's like romance, I think there's a love triangle in there because this is very much of its time of um, YA, like Twilight novels. I thought this was more fantasy, but I think it may be more dystopian. The description for this book is a fragile teenage girl is held captive, locked in a cell by the re-establishment, a harsh dictatorship in charge of a crumbling world. But Juliet is no ordinary teenager. One touch from her can kill. The re-establishment wants to use her as a weapon, but Juliet has other plans. After a lifetime without freedom, she's finally discovered the strength to fight back and to find a future with the one person she thought she'd lost forever. So yeah, I am excited for this. I'm getting back into YA. I think this is going to be a fun video for me to film and I'm just really hoping that lives up to what I've heard of it. And then the final book I bought from Waterstones, I do have other books in this book haul that I'm going to talk about but I just didn't buy them in Edinburgh but I wanted to include them so this isn't the end. I bought Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. If you watched, uh, was it my, my March wrap up I think this was in? You'll know that I love this book. I enjoyed the first book in the series too, Done and Dusted, and I do want to buy that, but I think um, it's cheaper at the works right now, my sister-in-law told me, so I think I need to buy it from there because it's like $3.99 or something, whereas in Waterstones this is $9.99. I love this book and I love these covers so much that I wanted them paperback. On my bookshelf I put it so the cover is out and it's just it's making me really happy seeing it. I just think it's really cool. I love the style and every time I see it it makes me want to read it again so I think this might be a reread very soon actually. But yeah this is a second in a series. You don't have to read the first one to understand what's going on but you are introduced to a lot of the characters that occur in this book in the first book. But it is a cowboy romance kind of like black cat golden retriever vibes closed off, really open. Hello, you lie down? Good girl. The chemistry in this was just so, so good. I loved both of the characters so much. The romance, the spicy scenes, everything was so top tier for me. It was a really high rated romance for me. I don't often rate romances that highly, even though I love romance books. There's just a, I think perfection in the genre is really, really hard for me. And it's all subjective as well. But yeah, I love this and I'm so happy I have this as a copy now. I just need to get my hands on the first book as well. And so yes, that's what I bought at Waterstones. I managed to restrain myself and only buy three books, even though I probably shouldn't have even bought three. And then we just walked down Princess Street because it was such a lovely day. We ended up going to the Willow Tea Rooms on Princess Street, which is fairly new, I think. It wasn't there when I lived there, but to be fair, I've not lived there for a couple of years now, which is mental time is going way too fast but yeah that you would have seen that in the wee clip at the start it was so lovely in there but it was so hot it felt like we were sitting in a greenhouse no it felt like we were sitting on the sun directly it was so hot because it's on the top floor they have these amazing views that look out over princess street gardens and you see the castle but because there's so many windows and the day was beautiful it was just letting the sun come right in there was a woman sitting in the window seat who literally had a hood over her head. She was using her hood to block the sun from like hitting her directly. She was that hot. So like kind of, <laughs> I mean that, that sounds so stupid being like, it was too sunny so it kind of ruined the experience. It didn't ruin the experience but it kind of like, it made it difficult to drink hot tea and have cake in the sun. And by this point as well I was getting so full that I kind of was feeling it sicky but it was really delicious. I had a lemon meringue tart and we had some chai tea and it was just very quaint and I would definitely go back, it was lovely. Me and my sister-in-law just talked about books that we like and are excited for, it was it was very sweet. And then after that we walked all the way down Princess Street again and went to Toppings Bookshop in Edinburgh. I obviously featured Toppings in my Bath Bookshop video but there is also a Toppings in Edinburgh and a Toppings in St Andrews. I think those are the three locations and the Edinburgh one is really really gorgeous and that was pretty much our day. We just got a drink after and then went home and it was really, really nice. And it was good to be back in Scotland as well. We always really love going back because obviously that's where all our families and all our friends are. Brought Sienna up with us in the car so she gets to have really nice 
walks but we were glad to be home even though we got sick like straight after both of me and Alex got so sick at the same time so like we were having to take care of each other whilst both feeling terrible as well like taking turns I have a couple other books that I want to talk about I've got Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson which my sister-in-law gave me because this is one of her favourite books that she's read I think she read it this year she loves it and she wants me to read it <laughs> I put it on my T I put it on one of my TBRs like at the beginning of the year I think and then I never got into reading it but now I have a copy of it that's no excuse for me but this is a sapphic vampire romance I think saved from the brink of death by a mysterious stranger Constanta is transformed from a medieval peasant into a bride fit for an undying king but when Dracula draws a cunning aristocrat and a starving artist into his web of passion and deceit, Constanta realises that her beloved is capable of terrible things. Finding comfort in the arms of her rival consort, she begins to unravel their husband's dark secrets. With the lives of everyone she loves on the line, Constanta will have to choose between her own freedom and her love for her husband, but bonds forged by blood can only be broken by death. I think I will be really into this but I think I just need to get into the mood for something like this. Like I have to be in the right mood. And I just don't know if I'm in the mood for a gothic romance right now. But you never know. You never know. I have it. So I think I'm just gonna pick it up whenever the mood takes me now. I'm actually, I've made a decision that I'm gonna stop making TBR videos because I was finding them quite stressful actually. I was finding the thought of sitting down and deciding what books I'm gonna read in a month quite stressful because I would just like feel the need to stick with that even if the books I'd chosen in the moment didn't fit with me and I know like I can change my mind and it doesn't matter. I'm sorry if I sound bunged up right now. I know that it doesn't matter <laughs> and I can make the rules but there's something about like saying that I'm gonna do something and then not doing it that makes me feel bad. Since I've decided I'm not gonna do TBR videos anymore, <laughs> I've started enjoying the process of picking up a book just based on whatever I'm feeling so much better it's that's literally what reading is and i've really enjoyed like getting into booktube and stuff and it has made me start reading more which is amazing but there is also the kind of like consequence of uh, a pressure as well of like having to read enough and like having thoughts and opinions on everything which i've worried which i'm worried that i started overthinking and started caring about things that don't actually matter and um, so I think stopping the TBR videos is actually going to really help with that. I also had a really exciting package when I got home because my friend had sent me a present for my birthday and one of the presents was this amazing collection of the Raven Boys YA book series which I know that she loved when she was younger and I think she said that she's recently started rereading them and she saw that in one of my videos I've been getting back into YA so she thought that I would enjoy them and I have also seen another YouTuber talking about this I think it was Carrie who maybe was reading them for the first time and she got really into them and that was kind of my only understanding of what the books were I'm sure my friend mentioned it to me before I've just forgotten but I'm very excited because I'm assuming this is all of the books maybe they're all here for me to dive into whenever I want and I thought I could maybe make a video out of this too because I know this is a beloved series so I thought I could maybe do like a video like I'm planning to do for the Shatter Me series as well with the Raven Boys. Let me read the description though because I actually have no idea. I, I have no idea. I've kind of forgotten anything that I learned from Carrie's videos on it except that I think one of the boys is really dramatic and drives a fancy car. It says, even if Blue hadn't been told her true love would die if she kissed him, she would stay away from boys, especially the ones from the local private school. Known as Raven Boys, they only mean trouble. But this is the year that everything will change for Blue. This is the year that she will be drawn into the strange and sinister world of the Raven Boys, and the year Blue will discover that magic does exist. This is the year she will fall in love. Yes, that description did bring back moments from that video for me but apart from that that's literally all I know so that should be a lot of fun I think so thank you so much to Emma because I'm so excited to read those books and then finally I've just got one more book that I have recently got which I bought for myself and that is Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent which came out in 2023. I first saw this on the BBC program Between the Covers and when I saw them talking about it I really wanted to read it because it sounded kind of like Eleanor Oliphant is 
totally fine or completely fine and i really really like that book the opening to this book sounds really good i'll just read you the first the first line of this book is put me out with the bins he said regularly when i die put me out with the bins i'll be dead so i won't know any different you'll be crying your eyes out and he would laugh and i'd laugh too because we both knew that i wouldn't be crying my eyes out I never cry. And that's a really good opener. And the blurb is, Sally Diamond cannot understand why what she did was so strange. She was only doing what her father told her to do, to put him out with the rubbish when he died. Now Sally is the centre of attention, not only from the hungry media and police detectives, but there's also a sinister voice from the past she cannot remember. As she begins to discover the horrors of her childhood, Sally steps into the world for the first time, making new friends and big decisions and learning that people don't always mean what they say. But who's the man observing Sally from the other side of the world? And why does her new neighbour seem to be obsessed with her? Sally's trust issues are about to be severely challenged. So do you see what I mean about it? Kind of, if you've read Eleanor Oliphant, which is about, mm, I think, is Eleanor autistic? Oh, I can't remember, but she basically isn't as attuned to social cues as the average person. This character sounds like this is the case for them as well. I think it's going to be a really interesting and enjoyable voice to read through. I like the idea of the mystery that she's uncovering from her past. And I just really like the start of the book. I like the opening line and I like the description. I think it's going to be really good. Um, me and my sister-in-law are reading it for our next month book club so I knew I needed to have it. And I'm glad that I finally have it after about a year of wanting it. So yeah, that's all the books that I kind of wanted to talk to you about. Some recent books that I have acquired in my growing collection that I'm excited about. I'm sorry if I've sounded um a bit bummed up or unwell during this video. I actually am feeling completely fine, but having to talk for so long is irritating my throat, so I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're getting nice weather where you are because it is glorious where I am right now. Me and Sienna have been sunbathing and we love it. And yeah, let me know if you're reading anything good at the moment. I'd love to talk to you about it and I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!